The colorless blender is often a complete mystery to alcohol marker beginners. So if you're wondering how to use it, you're definitely not alone. You might be surprised to learn that you don't actually use it for blending, at least not in the way that you might think. In this video, I'll show you 12 ways that you can use the colorless blender, including the way that I use it the most, literally dozens and dozens of times on every single alcohol marker artwork that I create. A colorless blender is just like any other alcohol marker, except it doesn't contain any ink, so it's completely clear. It only contains an alcohol solution. The most common way to use the colorless blender is to fix mistakes. If you're drawing or coloring and you accidentally go beyond your outline, like I did here, you can use the colorless blender to push back the extra ink and try to bring the paper back to white. Technically, the colorless blender is not erasing the extra ink. What's happening is that the colorless blender is diluting the ink that's on the paper, which lightens that area, and in doing so, it pushes the color in the direction that you're pushing it. So really, the colorless blender is used more often as a lightener rather than a blender. This technique is so handy that whenever I'm making alcohol marker art, I always keep a colorless blender nearby so that I can easily fix tiny mistakes whenever they happen. Here are two main ways that you might use the colorless blender for actual blending. The first way is to blend from a color to white. This is one of my favorite alcohol marker techniques because it makes your art really pop. In this mandala, for example, I blend into white in several areas, which makes the whole thing look really luminescent. You can watch a video showing how I colored this in right here on my YouTube channel. Another way that you can use the colorless blender for actual blending is to use it to dampen an area on your paper, like I'm doing here, before you blend. Blending is a lot easier when your paper is damp, so this will help the colors blend together. If you're using alcohol marker paper, then you usually won't need to do this, but it might come in handy if you're using a paper like cardstock. Another way that you can use your colorless blender is to add highlights. For example, if you want to make the circle look shiny, then you can use your colorless blender to draw on a little highlight, like this. For the most part, your colorless blender is self-cleaning, meaning you usually don't have to do anything special to keep the nib clean. But if you find that any traces of color still remain on your marker nib, simply wipe the nib on a spare piece of paper until the color is gone and the marker is once again clear. You can also use the colorless blender to add patterns to a colored area. You basically just draw on top of your alcohol marker layer using your colorless blender. Often, the patterns will not fully show up right away, so don't be alarmed if it looks kind of weird at first. It can take a few seconds for the colorless blender to fully interact with the color that's on the paper. So wait a few seconds after applying the colorless blender to see just how visible your pattern is and go over it if you need to. How well the patterns show up will depend on two factors, how light or dark the base color is that's underneath, as well as how long you held the nib of the colorless blender on your paper. You can also use the colorless blender to create textures in much the same way. You can do little swirly motions to create curly fur, or you can use the chisel nib to create a brick texture or do short flicking motions to create a grass texture. There are tons of possibilities that you can explore. If you're enjoying this video and finding it useful, please tap the like button, because that helps me know that you enjoy this kind of content. Another way that you can use the colorless blender is to squeeze some of it from a refill bottle into a little spray bottle, like this mini mister by Ranger. You can spray directly onto your paper and then blend on top of it. Depending on how much colorless blender you sprayed onto the paper, the colors you put on top will likely be diluted, but they'll be easy to blend. You can also spray directly onto an area that you've already colored. This will result in a mottled appearance, kind of grainy, so it's a quick and easy way to add some texture to your artwork. Another way you can create texture with this mini spray bottle is to spray some colorless blender onto a crumpled up tissue, paper towel, or fabric, like lace or corduroy. Then press it on top of an area that you've colored. If you don't have a mini spray bottle, you can always drip the colorless blender from the refill bottle directly onto your paper towel or tissue or cotton swab and apply it to your paper that way. Another idea is that you can drip the colorless blender directly from the refill bottle onto your paper. This results in big blobs, like this, with dark rings around the edges. 
If you're feeling experimental, this is a fun technique to try out, especially if you add paint pens on top to create a sparkly galaxy. When you apply Colorless Blender onto your paper using any of these dripping, blotting, or spraying techniques, the results can be rather unpredictable, so it's always best to practice first on a spare piece of paper to make sure you like the overall look before you try it on one of your artworks. Another way to use the Colorless Blender is to help create soft, fuzzy, or blurry edges, which you might want to do if you're coloring in fur, for example, or if you want to create a bokeh effect in the background. Normally, when you apply alcohol marker onto your paper, the edges are sharp and distinct, like you see here. You could apply the colorless blender around the outer edge of your shape and it will soften the edges. Or you could first put down a layer of colorless blender and then, while it's still damp, draw your shape. Then go over the edges with your colorless blender to make it even fuzzier. Another cool thing that you can do with a colorless blender is use it as a solvent for colored pencils. In this area that I just colored, notice how the white of the paper is showing through the colored pencil marks. If I go over it with my colorless blender, the alcohol in the blender marker dissolves the binder of the colored pencil, moistens the pigment, and spreads it around, filling in those gaps and creating a more solid color. Some of the colored pencil pigment will stick to your marker nib, and it's important to clean it off so that it doesn't clog up your nib. So like we did before, just rub the marker on your paper until the marker runs clear as normal. If you want to learn even more alcohol marker techniques, check out my ultimate guide to using alcohol markers, where I go way more in depth about everything you need to know to make awesome art with your alcohol markers. I'll post a link below this video. To see how I use the colorless blender to fade from a color to white, check out this video where I demonstrate how to create smooth and vibrant alcohol marker blends. See you there!